Okay, good evening again, and we welcome the student athletes and head coach for UCLA to my immediate left, uh, Jaime Jaquez, Coach Cronin, Elliot Nubo, and Kenneth, um, Kenneth Nubo. Excuse me, and Amari, Amari Bailey. So, uh, Mick, you mentioned yesterday during your press session that you get in these situations and it's so important to score points. Yes. And, and you scored points tonight <laughs> to the tune of 86. Well, we had uh, 24 assists tonight, which was probably a season high for us. Um, we got off to a great start, obviously, 14 nothing. I'm going to say we had five assists at least in our first six possessions. Um, we were uh, – I, but I, I, look, first I want to congratulate Coach Morrell and uh, UNC Asheville. To, uh, to go win 27 games is hard. To uh, make the NCAA tournament is hard. Uh, and they, they're, they're kids to be commended. Uh, Tejon Jones, to become the leading scorer in the history of your school, uh, it's a heck of an accomplishment. Uh, Drew Pember had an unbelievable year, player of the year, defensive player of the year in their conference. You know, tonight's not indicative of the season they had. They ran into a buzzsaw tonight. Uh, we don't take losing well at UCLA. Um, we spell fun, W-I-N. We lost our last game. These guys took it personal. Um, you saw how they came out tonight. So our defense, our defensive intensity and our deflections early in the game, I think really rattled, rattled them. They could never really get comfortable. We did a great job on their, on their shooters. Uh, Jones only made one three. Fletcher A.B. only made one three. Drew Pember only made one. So that was our big focus tonight. So our guys really approached the game with a professional attitude, um, which is something that uh, we try to focus on. And uh, it's not about our opponent, it's about us. So we got to make sure we maintain the same level of intensity and preparation uh, for uh, our next game. Questions? Jim? Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. Mick, did you really need to say anything to your, to your players about what happened, Princeton, Arizona, or Furman, Virginia, or no, did we, you figure they already? We don't, it has no bearing on us. We don't believe in false motivation. So we don't, uh, we don't believe that you need your home crowd to win. We don't believe you need two starters to win. We believe that you need toughness and togetherness, playing hard and smart. There's always a way to win, so. Here in the front. Uh, Tracy Pearson, Bruin Report Online. Uh, talk a little bit about, with the Dembona out, the contributions from, from your yeah. other two post players. Well, Ken, you know, Kenny doesn't surprise me. You know, he, 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 he's been around, and uh, he got off to a great start this year, and that injury he had against, so, was that Cal? It was a weird injury against Cal um, to his hip. And, uh, you know, he's not bothered. You see he's blocking shots in the Pac-12 tournament and again tonight. So he's got, he's got his bounce back and his step. Um, so, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. But him and, him and Mac are nine for nine. But, again, you know, you're playing a mid-major team. I think, you know, you look. Somebody alluded to Arizona. or so you, you, You've got to dominate those teams physically. You know, I coached at that level, and if you don't get dominated physically, you can win. You know, you can physically dominate those teams. It's hard for them. We have 32 to 8 points in the paint. These guys were 9 for 9, hit, you know, Ken, Kenneth and Mac. So, happy for them. But, you know, High Meg had his way as well inside. We end up plus 32 in the paint. And, that, you know, that, that's what you got to do in games like that. If you don't, you know, there's really if, – if your size and athleticism isn't a factor, then – doesn't matter if you're high major and they're mid major. You know, you, you, you know, you, you've got to you got to high major them. 
you know, and we did that tonight physically. Was there something you saw on Pember that you could trap him at that high post and, and get a couple of – Well, they uh, – Look, they, you know, they, they, their point guard is a tough kid. Um, he's not a three-point shooter. So, um, you know, we always try to take out the other team's best players. You know, if you let, you let the other team's best players come out and get their average or higher, you're in trouble. You know, and we did that at USC. I and mean, that's – we were in trouble. You know, you got to be able to take out the other team's best players. Ben. Uh, you had a career high uh, four and a half minutes into the game. What did that feel like out there to be contributing at that level that early in the game? What does it feel like? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, just just like my message every year, you know, when, when your name is called, just be ready to perform. Whether how you play or, how, or the contribution uh, uh, of yourself to the team, just be able to trust the coaches, staff, and, you know, just like he said, toughness and togetherness, that's how we win the game. The, the sports is it to get uh, to uh, fight uh, like ten or like a group game that you know it takes all guys to win, not just one man. So I would say it felt great. Bill, yeah, Mick. Given that these are still college kids and there's a tendency of human beings to take things lightly, these higher seed games. Did you know you were going to get this out of your team? Um, it doesn't surprise me because we lost our last game. You know, um, we don't. These guys are trained. You know, they, they don't. We don't take losing lightly. Um, you know, uh, they know. Like Amari's a freshman. He knows how I am. He's from Chicago. Like we play to win at UCLA. It's not okay to lose. I don't care who's hurt, who's out, who you're playing, where the game's at, what the refs are doing with the whistle. You got to find a way to win. So when we lost Saturday, I I wasn't happy, but I knew it was going to help us. I, I, there's no question it was going to help us. Because I, I, know, I know these guys. Like, I know how upset this guy was that we didn't win that game Saturday. I mean, he was as upset as I've ever seen him. So that helps. Sir? Tark Mattel from the Daily News. Coach, Amari Bailey, through his year, have you can you talk about his ability to kind of morph into what the team needs, whether it be defense, offense, or, or whatever you need him to do? Again, you know, there's very – we're in an era of – playing against 23 and four year olds. He's been 18, he just turned 19 less than a month ago. Um, there's a lot of high school kids in California older than him that are playing, that we're recruiting. So it's, you know, you know I think it's, a, it's just a lot harder than people realize. I'd let him speak to that. Um, you know, to find a comfort zone. You got two comfort zones you got to find. You're trying to find a comfort zone um, and adjust your game to college defense and college size where you can go to the basket all the time in high school. Um, the help is you've got to be able to do it with less dribbles. Then you've got to find a comfort zone on our team. You're coming in, you're playing with two all-pack, you know, player of the year in the Pac-12 and Tiger Campbell and Dave and, you know, a lot of, you know, guys that have been around. So, you know, it's, just, it's been a process for he and I of trying to get him to the comfort zone. And I think, you know, it, it didn't help that he missed a month, you know, with the foot. But you know, I think that's what you're seeing here lately. He's also embraced the defensive end, which doesn't surprise me because, you know, guys from the south side of Chicago. So <laughs> he's a tough, you know, he's a tough guy. Tony. Oh. Mario, I don't even know if you lost on this floor. I've seen you play, you know, your high school basketball here. But uh, just talk a little bit, you know, about, you know, coming here and playing again, you know, uh, from your uh, Sierra Canyon days and, until now? Um, it was just a surreal feeling, and it felt like um, a full circle moment. Um, it has, I haven't been here in four years, um, playing for um, a state championship my freshman year in high school to then um, step into my first uh, college March Madness game. I mean, I just had chills running through my body, and I just wanted to stay focused and um, stay present in the moment. Question up front. Um, Jaime, you had five steals in the first half. Amar, you had three. Could you speak a little bit about how you guys have been able to keep up the intensity on the def defensive end without Jalen? Um, I think, you know, we're, we're playing a lot for Jalen this tournament. Um, I know that entering into this game, you know, they had a really good guy in Pember. 
Um, and, you know, I, my entire my entire thought process going into the game is doing whatever I could to just stop him to get stop him from getting going. And, um, you know, I took a page out of J-Rock's book, try to get steals, try to be active with my hands, and try to do it for him. Josh? I mean, Coach talked about how upset you were on Saturday. How, how do you use that as fuel to, to motivate you when, when you have something that goes bad like Saturday did to then – how do you sort of channel that into a positive? I mean, I you know, I try not to dwell on it, you know, because if we lose now, you know, my entire season's done. So <laughs> I, I don't think it's very hard to get me, uh, me going or any of the rest of the guys for that matter. Um, I know this is Kenny's last year too, um, you know, and then we try to get the young guys to understand this and understand that this is a one and out tournament and we don't want this to end. And. Uh, <clears throat> And to add a little bit to that, you know, you know, one thing about life is when you lose something, you know, use that as a motivation because, you know, you're not gonna win every time. You lose some, you win some. And then when the next time, when the next game comes, you use that as a motivation to play. Look at your mistakes and you know, try to correct yourself and not trying to lose the game. How about that answer, Bill? St. Patrick's Day on the East Coast. Uh, Jalen Clark, we miss you, buddy. Wow. You guys done? You got, you got any more? J-Rod. See, I tried to get us out of here. We're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we didn't play tonight and didn't need him, do you expect uh, Adem to be ready for Saturday? I think Adem could have played tonight. Um, you know, I, he didn't get enough uh, um, practice for me. We didn't really, you know, we, we don't practice – live a lot right now but just even with our five on those stuff i, I want to see him there's some things i want to see him do comfortably that uh but i knew what was going to happen as soon as he warmed up he comes running in the locker room i'm, I'm playing i'm playing the easy big fella <laughs> you know that's just who he is he's just he's such a you know he's got oscar robertson stuff up here cincinnati royals that's i right. just noticed that i know you did you guys have no idea, Amari. Nope. Great, great. No, I'm focused. I'm from Cincinnati. I'm focused on the Cincinnati Royals. So I don't know if you know that, but I see Jack Twyman and Oscar Robertson, guys I was fortunate enough to meet and get to know. Sometimes you get a lot of pleasures in this job, a lot of perks with the job. Many times. Many times. Had cigars with him. Yeah. <laughs> Lives in Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, they know who Oscar Robertson is. Yeah. 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 I don't know about Kenny. Him and Adem were watching a soccer game. You're asking about that game? They were watching soccer on their phone today. And what do you expect? That's the sports we play in Nigeria. <laughs> they, they literally, was it a big tournament or something? Uh, yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> they were watching soccer. That's like, the best sports we play. Before we All right, guys. Thank you. thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were watching soccer. <laughs>
exemplars. Okay, we have the contingent from UNC Asheville. Tejon Jones, head coach, um, excuse me, uh, Mike Morell, and uh, Drew Pember. Coach, um, I'll let you start off your overall impressions. Uh, you ran into a, a little slow start, shall we say, and. Uh, well, you sh you want to you want to take it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I mean, they're really good. You know, I, I did a poor job of getting our team ready for their physicality on on defense, and uh, you know, like I told these guys. You know, when, when you're in this situation, um, whatever team you play, uh, when you're the 15th seed, it's going to be the best team you've played all year. And uh, that was the case tonight, and I give them a ton of credit. Uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they were the aggressors early, and they took it to us, and, and uh, you got to give them credit for that because, um, you know, you, they, they were not going to be caught sleeping. And so uh, I thought they were really good defensively. Uh, they just kind of – really pushed us around all over the floor. But, but again, you know, um, I'm just really proud of, of our players. I'm really proud of who they are. It's really hard to get here. There's only 68 teams that get the chance to do that. And, you know, this guy to my right is, is uh, meant everything to me. He's meant everything to this program. This guy to my left is um, he's one of the best players in the country. And so I'm going to tend to focus on that tonight and not going to let uh, one game um, – you know, damper what this awesome team has done, uh, not only for for our program, but for our university and for our city and everything. It's just been a really, really special year. And quite frankly, I'm just bummed I don't get a chance to coach these, you know, these guys together again. I've never, I've never coached one game as a head coach without this guy to my right, uh, ever. And so, um, that that sucks. Credit to UCLA, they were really good tonight. Sir. Tark Patel from the Daily News. Coach, I know you've seen a lot of NCAA games as an assistant. Was there anything you tried to do to try and prepare these guys for this moment um, as best you could? And if you did, what did you try and do? Everything I tried didn't work tonight. But, um, you know, I, I will say this. You you can talk about it, and but – you don't really know, um, you can't really understand it until you experience it. And you can't really experience it until you understand it. And that's like a vicious cycle, right? But it's the truth. And so um, I thought Singleton and obviously Tiger and, and Jaquez, like those guys have played in Final Fours and you can, it showed. Um, and again, you gotta give them a lot of credit I thought our guys battled after we got punched in the mouth early on. Um, but, you know, again, there's a reason why there was a two next to their name, and some people argued there could have been a one. But um, you try to prepare, man. You know, you try to talk about it. Um, but, hey, listen, man, you, you try to enjoy the moment, too. Like, we're a one-bid league, you know, and, and we were 16-2 and two in our league. There's only one team coming out of our league. So we're here, we're going to enjoy it, but we also came to compete. We just didn't do a good enough job of that tonight. Uh, but it doesn't take away all the great things that these guys have accomplished. So, yeah, we tried, man. You know, we tried to, you know, explain what the experience was going to be like. But I would just say these guys probably would agree that it's a little bit different when you actually get out there and those emotions are flowing. And, um, I wish I'd have done a better job of helping them with it, though. To, just to piggyback on that exactly, Drew, can you speak to just it being your first experience and how difficult it was in those first five or six minutes? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, we couldn't, we didn't really get the chance to settle in until, you know, about the second half. Uh, we were, you know, a lot better in the second half turnovers wise. I was, I was extremely flustered at the beginning of the game. I had no idea what it was going to be like. Um, you know, my tenure at Tennessee, I got in for a minute, um, but I didn't really know what it was like. So getting into the game tonight, those first four minutes, your, your adrenaline, your emotions are extremely high, and I didn't handle that well. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? OK. Thanks for Gentlemen, coming. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming up. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, 
Thank you, Coach. Have a good year next year. Tomorrow afternoon, the uh, press conferences uh, will commence at 1.30 in the afternoon, 1.30.